but you know, this fascinates me because I was for many, many years a vegetarian, and then I was challenged. I wrote When Elephants Weep, which turned me into a lifelong vegetarian. And then, you know, various people, John Robbins, so many people said, in, in my case, it was actually Cesar Chavez, a long time ago. And he said, well, what, you, you think you're, you know, you think you're kind to animals and you eat their eggs and you eat their, you wear their skin and you drink their milk and you take their babies. And oh my God, stop, stop, stop. But I didn't really think about it deeply until I started doing the research for The Pig Who Sang to the Moon, one of my books, um, deeply, not popular, not like when elephants weep, people didn't mind that, but when you start saying that farm animals, farmed animals, have these same emotions that elephants and every other animal, then you're really treading on people's toes because you're challenging them to say exactly what you say. Why would you, and you know, I, I, I see that you use the word plant-based, and that's great, um, but I, I wouldn't do that because my diet is not based on plants, it's exclusively. So, you know, that's why I don't mind the vegan word, but I know a lot of people find it a horrible sounding word. I'm not sure why. In Italy, it's okay, vegetaliano. Oh, that sounds cute, yeah. Not that they know what it is, but they like the sound of it. <laughs> so I, I think it is a progress, but here's the puzzle for me. When I was a vegetarian, I really did not stop to think that, I, you know, I'd look at a piece of chocolate and it didn't occur to me suffering. I didn't think that. You know, they, they've really, it's, I mean, with meat, almost all young children at some point in their life look at a piece of meat, and you know, somebody says, pass the leg, pass the neck, pass, thought, oh, what? <laughs> You're kidding. You mean that's an animal? And they really, I mean, every child, I think, goes through this and is horrified, and then, of course, they're browbeaten, as you said. The society says, stop it, don't be a sissy, don't be ridiculous. And, you know, they make their life hell for a couple of weeks or months, and they finally give in and say, okay, okay. But when it comes to, but they do recognize this is an animal. That's why I called one of my books The Face on Your Plate. You know, you see it. I mean, I still don't get it when you go into a restaurant, I'll have lamb. Lamb? Lamb? You mean that baby little thing that's, and I, I met Alice Waters, the, the person who started Chez Panisse, and let me see, oh. She says, our animals are treated so well, we never serve an animal that hasn't led a wonderful life. Said, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, Alice. F***ing liar. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I, this shouldn't be a DVD. Can you, can you strike that? My wife tells you, you can't talk like that, because I do it once in a while in New Zealand, they all go, <gasps> they never hear anybody say those things, but in America you can do it. But the thing is, she's serving lamb, and they've, they've been alive for how many weeks? How can you talk about a good life for a personality that's lived for a few weeks, or these baby chickens, or any of these animals they love, you know, suckling pigs, they call them in France, and all these places, I mean, these are animals, they're baby animals. So when somebody tells you, I only eat an animal who's led a good life, they're lying. It's just not true. And I think this is part of the problem with this whole idea of humanely raised meat. There's no such thing as humanely raised. It doesn't mean anything. They all die. <laughs> Okay, Jeff wants me to stop, and it's nice to stop. Uh, we, we need more time. We need more time for you, Jeff. Thank you very, very much. Yeah. Jeff Mason.